um, Juanisha Foxworth, who will be our facilitator for today. Juanisha. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much. I am excited to be here with all of you um, right after a, a pretty, you know, cool weekend. Um, I'm excited that we can have this conversation off the heels of uh, what you did with my colleague, Arm Armina Doming. I'm not going to take a lot of time today, but I do believe today's subject is going to allow us to have a conversation that we don't normally have. We don't talk about grief and loss in a way that is healthy at times. When we're in the moment, we feel it and we want to make sure that others understand that we're feeling it, but how do we get through that process? And so today, I am happy to bring some lessons learned from myself and others, and hopefully you'll be able to garner something that will lead you into your next phase. The interesting part of today's conversation is we can't get away from grief. We can't get away from loss. Unfortunately, as we live our life on a day-to-day -day basis, it's something that we will experience. And so hopefully we're able to take away some key points. Now I'm gonna share my screen in just a moment, but I hope you have a pen and paper in hand. I hope you're ready. I know some of you might be doing other things while listening. So hopefully uh, we can have a, have a good conversation at times, but you'll be able to answer, ask some questions at the end. If you're all set, I'm just gonna briefly ask you to put a number one in the chat if you're ready to have this conversation with me today, if you're all set. If number two, you're kind of nervous. It's like, what's this conversation going to be all about? And number three is, I'm getting there. I'm almost ready. Give me a couple seconds. So one in the chat if you're all ready. Two, if you're kind of nervous. Three, uh, I need a couple seconds. I'm getting all aboard. Oh, I love the interaction we're having right now. Looks like a lot of people, number one, all ready. That's wonderful. Okay. Well. Let me give you a little bit of background about me. So I come from a long line of sort of nonprofit um, ex educational uh, executives. And I have been doing trainings for the past sort of uh, 10, 15 years. And through um, my interactions and with people, I've learned to garner some opportunities to have conversations that are a little bit more hard, a little bit more um, intense, and hopefully I'm able to give you um, some insight into my own life. I've experienced so much grief in my life that oftentimes I always think about grief as something that happens, it's part of my life, it is what it is, I'm gonna work through it and keep it going. But that has not been the best approach. So in today, I wanna make sure that we identify some ebbs and flows and changes of grief, right? What does that look like? Do we know that grief is an ebb and flow? Do we know that grief isn't a one-time thing? We want to understand some powerful lessons learned through that grief process. It is a process. If you were with us last week, you heard about some of the um, opportunities that you have when going through grief, what it looks like, how you can sort of lean into it and be able to learn from it and come out on the other side. And the importance of self-care. Oh, we've been talking about self-care a lot in our community for the last sort of three to five years. It's an important piece of working through grief. And I think we didn't know that's what it was, you know, years ago. We thought it was something, you know, let me just take care of myself because I'm in a bad place. But, but now we have a definition. We have words. And I want to talk through what that looks like. So my agenda today, to today, introduction, I went through goals. And we're gonna do a little check-in, four corners. It's gonna be interesting. Get ready for that because I'll need you in the chat for that. We're gonna talk about coping with grief. What does that look like, coping with grief? It's not something you can sort of check off the list. And then we're gonna talk about those steps to self-care. And then we're gonna do some reflection and close. I know we're scheduled to be here for 90 minutes. And you know I know that any learner past you know, 60 minutes, it gets a little hairy. So that last couple of minutes, last 15, 20 minutes or so, I wanna make sure I get your questions and answers in. All right. So let's do our check-in, four corners. These are my check-in four corners. Every day we wake up in one of these quadrants. We like to think we're not in those quadrants. We like to think we sit in the middle, 
But one of these quadrants is our day-to-day -day sort of norm. And it doesn't mean you sit in the same quadrant all the time. You move around. And actually, if you think about it, throughout your day, you probably move in all four quarters at some point, depending on your job function, your family life, your individuality. So today, though, I just want to check in, right? As we go into this conversation about grief, which sometimes can be heavy, I want to see where you sit. So if you, in one word, in one of these quadrants, in your chat box, please let me know where you sit today. Are you stressed? That means something is coming up or is in your space right now that's keeping you sort of nail biting and trying to figure it out? Are you joyous? You woke up this morning. It was a wonderful day to wake up and you're ready for your day. You're relieved something was stressing you or something you wanted to overcome or a challenge you've been able to face or you're just glad it's Monday and you're back to work or you're doing something different. And or you're just overwhelmed because you can't be stressed, you can't be joyous, you can't be relieved. There's just so much going on that you can't even feel those other emotions. In your chat box, if you don't mind putting those words in there for me. And I just want the one word. I understand we want to explain our, 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 our quadrants at times. Oh, I love it. Okay. So I've seen some relief, some stressed some stress, some overwhelmed. I have a joyous, I like to see that. Overwhelmed and joyous and overwhelmed and stressed. Oh, wow. So we've got, I would say we're, we're quite overwhelmed in this group. Um, and hopefully I, we can talk about that. But I want you to put a pin in that. So that feeling that you feel at this moment of overwhelmed, joyous, stressed, um, relieved, wherever you sit in that, right? That's gonna help in this conversation we're gonna talk about grief and loss. It's interesting, today I feel much relief. Um, I had a pretty stressful weekend, uh, to be honest with you. And who knew that getting up on a Monday morning to be able to present to complete strangers about a topic that's not a norm was give me some relief. It allows me to you know, stretch myself, push myself, but I still feel a bit of a relief. But those of you that aren't in that box, it doesn't mean that you can't get to that box today. Or those of you that are in the relief box, it doesn't mean that you can't become overwhelmed in a matter of moments. But hopefully when we get to the end, your word's going to look a little different for everyone because you're going to learn a little something different. So thank you for sharing in that. So let's talk a little bit about, sorry, there we go, grief. Grief is the path you don't do, is, is yours all alone, right? No one else can walk into that. No one else can understand it. It's because each of us are individually wired to understand what emotions do for us. So when I asked about that emotions box, it's because each of us feel it different. If I ask two joyous people why they're joyous, it's gonna be two separate answers. If I ask people if they're the two overwhelmed, why they're overwhelmed, I'm going to get separate answers. Grief is the same way. The path you take through that grief, why that grief came is individually yours. I want to make sure that you understand that because oftentimes we attack grief as a group lump sum. Everyone who lost something in this particular incident must feel and must attack it the same way. And that's simply not true. It's yours and yours alone. And no one else can really understand it. You know how oftentimes people say, how are you doing? And you try to explain it and you sort of get a glaze over look at times or they're trying to help you understand your grief. That's helpful at times, but understand that anyone you ask still isn't gonna completely understand that grief that you help you hold. So let's talk about the difference between grief and grieving. How many know that, you know, there's a difference? Put a one in the chat box if you know there's a difference between grief and grieving. Oftentimes we use them interchangeably. It's like, oh, that family is grieving or they have experienced grief and loss. Sometimes we use it as one interchangeable word. But if you understand that they are different, you'll be able to attack it in a different way. So grief, sorry, my computer is just doing its own thing. 
Grief is the emotional state that just knocks you off your feet and comes over you like a wave. So it's that probably that Im immediate response to whatever it is that has happened, right? You get that phone call, you see that news article, you uh, experience it yourself in the moment. That's that emotional state that just hits you at the moment. It's there. You're in a state of denial sometimes. You're in complete um, exhaustion sometimes in that moment. But grief is just that emotional state that puts you right there. But let's talk about grieving. Grieving isn't necessarily a time component, right? Grieving is what happens when we adapt after the fact. So we hit that grief piece, but the grieving part happens well afterwards. And so you can both be in grief and grieving at the same time, but they're not interchangeable. You do have to sometimes experience grief to grieve, but you can't be in grieving without having grief. I know that's probably a, a mouthful, uh, said a lot there, but think about it. If you don't experience that piece of grief, will you have the opportunity to grieve through it and have that time to overcome it? I say that because sometimes we can go through the grieving process and they can be done but that grief is still an experience that doesn't go away. You're gonna experience the grief and you go through the grieving process to attack the grief. Remember that as you sort of talk to other people, as you approach it in your life, that I'm gonna experience grief. I have experienced grief. I've gone through the grieving process and I've come out on the other side and I may not be grieving anymore, but I've experienced that grief and loss. Remember, if you have questions, put it in the questions box. I'm happy to answer them on the other side. So let's talk about the emotions involving in grief and grieving, right? These are intense emotions. So you've experienced that grief and you're like, okay, what's next? What's going on? How do I approach it? What should I do? There's oftentimes a panic, sort of that undescribable anxiety because you don't know what's next. There's an overwhelming sadness that happens and a yearning for just trying to explain these emotions. How many have thought about it? You don't have to put this in the chat, but after you've experienced that grief, there's all these range of emotions that happen that you can't really sort of put your finger on. You can't really sort of tie it in a bow put it in a box. It's those things that happen. And how many have understood that it happens continuously? So that grief is a one-time event that you will experience. The grieving process, there's no, it's not time bound, so it can happen continuously. So you could think you've gone through the grieving process and a week later, you're feeling this anxiety that you can't explain. There's a sadness that's overwhelming to you. Or there's a yearning to sort of reach out and do something different, be exploratory. You can't really put your finger on it, but there's these emotions that are happening. And I want to be clear that they're intense emotions. So I think we all go through the periods of like, oh, I want my life to be a little bit different. Like, I'm just going to put it out there. I want, you know, every year I'm talking about, I'm going to be in the gym five times a day. Oh, I have a yearning. I'm going to go. I'm going to go. And then I fall off. And then the three months later, I'm like, oh, I'm going to go to the gym. I'm going to do it. It's a continuous effect and cycle, but it's not intense, right? I'm not like, oh, sitting at my desk, like I'm going to the gym. Me and that elliptical machine are going to be one. That's not necessarily the case. In the grieving process, those emotions sort of hit you like a brick wall. And sometimes, they are not stabilizing you because you're not able to sort of grapple with those particular emotions. Panic, anxiety, sadness, and yearning. They aren't all the emotions, but 
doctors say that these are the ones that experience the most because the grieving process is not a normal emotion. Joyous, sadness, um, overwhelmed, um, stress, all those things are, are emotions that we, we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. But grieving isn't one. So when you feel it from the grieving process, it's more intense than what you would have felt before. So what's happening in our brains at that particular time? I wanted to take the time out so that you understand that during that grieving process, there's so much going on in the biggest and most important muscle in our body, our brains. It isn't just that our heart is hurting for whatever that loss is. It isn't just that we've got emotions sort of tingling with, within us, but our brains are doing something during that grieving and loss. And it affects us on the day-to-day -day basis. Being able to recall sort of simple things, right? Simple memories are sometimes affected through this grieving process. Taking the perspective of another person. When you're in that moment, everyone knows sort of when you're in your own space and you're thinking through a process or a problem, you sometimes zone out. You're not really listening to your, you know, your colleagues, your family members, your son, your daughters, your moms, your dads. We're sort of in that moment. But when you're in the grieving process, that perspective of another person. So when they ask how you're doing and then you explain and they try to explain back to you, you're sort of not hearing. You're in that space because your brain at that moment is insular. It's really focusing on what you're going through. And then regulating the heartbeat, right? Our heartbeat. The brain is because our emotions, right? We feel them. I know that most of you probably have heard this before, but it's a very real thing that our emotions affect our health. And so that's why they say people who are stressed all the time are higher, have a higher incident of heart disease because of that stress. It's the same thing with the grief process. And so our brain is trying to tell our heart and everything to sort of slow down. Don't get so excited because that will affect our health. So grieving is both an emotion, but it's also a health process. Remember those two things, right? That I'm going to get these intense emotions, but I also have to remember that my brain is doing something to help make sure that I stay as calm and as safe as possible. I was so blown away when I heard this part, right? When I talked and you know read about sort of what our brains can do to make sure that when we're in crisis, to help regulate what we need to do on a day-to-day -day basis. So that means that we probably need to look at our brains and our health and our, our livelihood in a different way. That's why that self-care conversation is gonna be extremely important because we don't know sort of what that could do to make sure that we don't experience grief in a different way. So, I'm going to say a couple of things before we dive a little deeper, right? Grief will subside over time. That grieving process happens in a step-by-step -step process, but it's not always the same for every person. Give yourself time so that you can identify, accept, to express those all those emotions. I went through those previous slides to help get to us to this period because we don't always think about the fact that grieving could affect our health. We don't always think about the fact that the grief process is mine and mine alone. Also, the grieving process will subside over time. It's not something that will be continuous. Now, the time frame it takes to get over it is something different, but it will. We have to go through the process that will help make us stronger right? So it's going to subside over time. It's not going to happen step by step or in some orderly fashion. And you got to give yourself time. Give yourself a break. The key point to this is to identify that you're in a grieving process. Oftentimes we look at grief from a number one perspective, and that's the loss of a loved one through death. That's the most excruciating part of grief and grieving. But grief comes in so many other ways that I don't want to just look at it from the perspective of 
the death of a loved one, but also you we experience loss in so many ways. Loss of a job, loss of a friend, loss of finances, loss of a home. Grief shows itself in very different ways. And remember that when we experience that grief, we've got that intense emotion. And then we've got that stuff that's happening in our brains. Put a pin in that for yourself. If you haven't already, sort of jot that down. Like grief comes in all shapes and sizes, not just in it's the number one part of grief, death, but in other ways. So sometimes you might be feeling emotions that you haven't really identified because you didn't know that you were grieving a particular thing. We'll come back to that as well. So this is where you're going to talk back to me, right? So we talked about it in our four corners, right? Everybody was in a different quadrant, but everybody, if you have walked, <clears throat> excuse me, at some point in time on this earth has some stress, you know, from getting in the, the perfect school, if that's what you wanted when you were younger, to getting a great job, to marrying the love of your life, to having a child, to buying your first car, to simply finding out what's lunch. I don't know about all of you, but sometimes lunch is very difficult to figure out. But what's your stress management strategy? So in one word, right? If you're in that moment where things are stressful, maybe you're standing at the grocery store trying to figure out what you want to buy. Maybe you're at home like, I just need to work out, but what does that look like? Maybe it's you know the upcoming birth of a child or grandchild. What's your stress management strategy? I want one word. Maybe I'll take two this time. Okay, in the chat box, what's your stress management strategy? I love to hear if there's any sort of interesting ideas. Do you practice yoga? Do you go to workout? Do you find your lovely pint of ice cream? How about a piece of cake? Maybe just a, a, a long walk. What's your stress management strategy? So interested to see these. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I love that we want to unwind. We want to exercise. Might be that glass of wine. Great strategies. And if you don't have a strategy, it's okay. It's like if it's in the moment and you have a stress at that particular moment and you're just like, okay, I just need to go do some Ben shopping. Go do that. Or if you need to whip out that music, I love it. Music, number one stress management strategy for me because I can get to it easily at any time. I can pull it up at work. I can do all of that. I love it. Great. Thank you so much for sharing, everybody, that stress management. I'm going to have to call some of you that go do that workout thing. We probably need to talk that through. I love the music. Great. And so... When you think about a stress management strategy, we don't often think that, how about we have a grief and loss management strategy as well? What could that look like? What could help me in the moment as I'm going through the process to manage my grief and loss? It might be the same thing. And I don't want you to put that in the chat. I'm just putting a pin in it, right? What could be my grief and loss strategy? because we all have stress management strategies in some way, shape or form. We know where to go to at what point in time, as soon as that stress comes up, I need to do this and it's quick. But how about when we talking about grief and loss? And remember I said, grief and loss is not just about losing a loved one. It's at any time we feel like we've lost something. And that could happen on a daily basis, unfortunately for some of us because of the life that we have, the, the stress that we've put on ourselves, we might experience loss. But I'm gonna come back to that. And remember, if you have questions, please, I'm excited to hear about your questions. Thank you so much for sharing your stress management strategies. All right, let's talk about why we should grieve, okay? So we've gone through this grief, something has happened, and we've just got this overwhelming intensive emotion. Why next should we go through the grieving process? 
it's important because it allows us to free up the energy. Remember we talked about what was going on in our brains? Remember we talked about sort of all those sort of panic and anxiety? If we've got all that going on with us all the time, we have no energy, right? To continue to help others live the life we need to get on our jobs because we've got all of that energy going that other direction. The grieving process, process, I'm sorry, allows us to free up that energy anytime we experience loss. And remember, it's not just a loss of person, an object, an experience, um, a job, anything. We can then reinvest that energy someplace else. If we go through that grieving process, we free that up. And you know, I don't know about any of you, but I have no space to have it clouded by things that are not going to help me move it forward, okay? Until we sort of grieve effectively, we can't reinvest that energy. And so it's bound up by all this other stuff. And then what do we talk about? Sort of that gonna affect your health, your relationship with others, your complete livelihood. And we by no means want that to happen. And it, it keeps us in the past. I don't know about you, but I'm sure you have you seen those people who haven't completed that grieving process, unfortunately, and they live in that past and they take that grief on with them. And you're talking years down the line. And as is, is, it is as if that grief happened that day. All of that energy that they have put together for that grieving process is still there years later and they're not happier. They're not able to be self-reliant, self-sufficient because they haven't taken themselves through that grieving process. These are the lessons that I've been learning through, through the years, having the opportunity to sort of talk through grief and loss is that I see so many people sort of still holding on and tied to the past and they're not able to experience what life they could enjoy at the moment. Remember that the grieving process is a process. It's not something that's one and done. So we've all heard about the five stages of grief, right? I wanna talk it through with you because we talk about it. Everybody says, well, you, you gotta go through the stages of grief. Or if you sit down with you know, a particular counselor or a friend or even, you know, um, or your religious leader, they always talk about sort of, you've got to go through the process. You've got to understand that grief process. So we understood sort of now that the emotions that come with grief, that intense emotions that we've talked about. So what do we do with those emotions, emotions is they take us to these five stages, right? The grief happens, we've got these intense emotions, and now we're trying to go through the grieving process with all of that. The denial. That happens pretty much instantaneously because it's such a heavy loss. We just can't believe it happened. That loss of that job you've been working on for umpteen years, helping your coworkers, doing their job and more, and then you're being let go. What? This can't be, the denial happens continuously, right? You just simply can't believe it. And then anger. I believe as human beings, we probably go to this one and sit here a little bit longer than we probably should, right? Because how dare they? Who said they could? Why would they leave me? What am I supposed to do now? All the anger sort of just sits there. Unfortunately, you know, some people say that the anger keeps us in the grieving process the longest because sometimes we can't get through that stage. Let me put a plug right here. The five stages are not in order. You don't have to go through denial, then anger, then bargaining, then depression, then acceptance. No, it can go all different ways at different times. And you can repeat the stages multiple times. So that denial, that anger, and then that bargaining. So this is where you sort of look at the, the grief and try to make it better by doing something else. So simply saying, you know, um, 
if I had done this, this wouldn't have happened. Or if I had taken her here, maybe she wouldn't have drove by herself and gotten in a car accident. Or maybe it's all the, it's the, it's those back and forth where you're trying to bargain the way out of that grief, like, and put it on yourself. Please understand that's a norm in the stages of grief, but don't stay there. The depression comes when you are just at the lowest part of the grieving process. You've understood it. It hurts. There's the sadness, the overwhelming. It's the place where we live as humans uncomfortably, but it's so overwhelming to get out of. And then there's the acceptance. We understand that we've experienced this loss. It's not going to leave us. We will be stronger for it. And I can move on. Now, that one is where you come out of the stages of grief. So you can go through the first four multiple times. But when you get to the acceptance, that's when the healing starts. Now, we talked a little bit earlier about the people who lived in the past, right? That's because they were going through these grieving stages one by one. But they probably are stuck in one of these places. And I will say, as a plug, if you're stuck in any one of those stages, is the opportunity to reach out for help. Or if you see someone, it's the opportunity to reach out to give help. The five stages of, of grief you know, are exactly that. They're stages, they move, they ebb and flow. You don't have to do them in order, as I said, but you can't avoid them either. So some people will say, I'm not depressed. I've never been depressed. I understand this, you know, the process of life, or I'm just going to look for a new job. It wasn't the best job for me. They've got to go through those stages though, because inevitably, you know, years down the line, you'll see people who's like, what's wrong? What happened? It's because they didn't fully go through that grieving process for whatever loss that they had. And so they're stuck in that space and they don't realize it. So please understand that. Remember, I asked you questions. So I want to take a moment and just talk about my story. Some may say, <clears throat> how do you even feel comfortable sort of presenting on this, talking through this process? Grief is an overwhelming thing. It's an emotion that, unfortunately, we start to experience at a young age. And we don't often get taught sort of how to work through those emotions. I can tell you that, excuse me, I had just graduated from high school and I was on my way to college, excited to take that journey, to move away from home, to experience what it could be like um, on a college campus, everything that sort of, as a young person, you, you want to experience. The caveat was like, my parents said to me, okay, you can only go, but so far, they sort of gave me boundaries, like this many miles, you could go away. I was trying to take myself to, to Alabama, to, um, oh, by the way, I'm from Philly. I'm a Philly girl. But so I was trying to take myself to Alabama, I remember, or in, in, in Georgia. And they were like, no, you can't go any further than Maryland. So I found myself in Maryland. It's like, because we don't know what's going to happen. I said, okay, let's go. Moved in. Two weeks into being on campus, I got a phone call from my mom who said to me, you know, Grandpa is a little sick. He's he's not doing too well, he's in the hospital, <laughs> excuse me. Now he had been in the hospital prior to, so it wasn't, you know, not a norm, but you know, she wanted to give me that heads up and that update. Um, and then two days later, unfortunately, he died of a heart attack. In that moment, I sat in my dorm room by alone, trying to understand the grief that had happened 
two weeks being on campus, trying to understand my story, trying to understand what was going on. It had felt as if a knot had sort of come into my throat and I felt so overwhelmed and I couldn't explain it. Went home, you know, went through the process with my family of saying our goodbye to my, my lovely grandfather who was just the sweetest old man. You know, he was always old to me. He's like, he was gray since I was like a baby. Went back on campus. And, you know, no one ever really talked to me like what that felt, what that looked like. But oftentimes I found myself sort of walking in a fog, walking sort of in isolation, but I was going to class and doing it, doing what I was supposed to be doing. Fast forward a month later, my dad calls. His dad had fallen ill. And I was just like, really, dad? He said, yeah, but we're, you know, we're, we're, they're running tests. They're trying to see what was going on. And then two weeks later, he passed. I'm telling you, I couldn't make this up. I'm a freshman in college away from home. I've now lost both of my grandfathers within two months time. Went home again, sort of went through the emotions. This time though, come back on campus, it wasn't as easy. It wasn't sort of me just going through the emotions. It now weighed on me like a heavy burden. And at that young age, no one ever talked to me about that, right? My parents, of course, of course, checked in, um, made sure I was okay. You know, I had friends who checked in, but there was that sort of level of emotion that I couldn't really figure out. It was a weight on my shoulders. And, you know, freshman year was a bit of a fault. To this day, I have no idea how I passed any classes, I have no idea how I made it through that. And I sort of just went through the emotions and I never truly properly grieved and went through the grieving process through those loss. It wasn't until years later that I was going through similarly, you know, a training that was really sort of talking about cultural awareness and who I was as an individual, that I realized that the loss of those two sort of icons in my life was affecting who I was as an individual. And so I had to work through that muckety muck. Right? I had to work through it pretty significantly. And so the next time that I experienced such intense loss was from a family friend who just left. I could then process it a little differently. But there's some things I then learned from that process. And I wanted to show that sort of trajectory of my story because oftentimes you know, I thought back, like, what was my biggest grief and loss? And I would always talk about sort of this family friend who I lost very suddenly. Um, and, it, you know, it sort of blew up my friend's world, and my world. But it wasn't that. If I really thought back to sort of my story of how this grief and loss and understanding the grieving story, it happened well when I was a teenager. And that lack of understanding sort of put me on a trajectory they kept me a little bit depressed, kept me a little bit angry, and really affected sort of my day-to-day -day life. So what did I learn from those lessons? What did I learn from sort of that process? And I gave you examples of sort of, of losing a loved one to death. But I thought about it and I said, maybe I could tell you about my first love that I lost because that did a doozy on me as well. But as you think about it, right, just for a moment, each of you, I'll take 30 seconds of silence. Think back to your story. What's your sort of first grief and loss and the grieving process? Did you have an opportunity to go through it? In the chat box, puts one if you say no, two if you say yes. Think back though, I'll be quiet for 30 seconds.
So think about it. Again, that first grief and loss that you had, did you have that opportunity to sort of go through that grieving process? Did your brain sort of take you through that process to regulate your emotions? One for yes, I'm sorry, one for no, two for yes. And it's okay, no judgment. I just completely put myself out there to all of you. But just think about it. Great, I see you all. Thank you for so much for participating. I see we have ones and twos, and that's great. Not that you weren't able to go through the grieving process, but the reflective moments will allow us to really think about sort of how do we go through the next piece? How do we learn sort of what we didn't? Well, I'll say I, what I didn't know at that first stage of grief and loss and how it now affects me on a day-to-day -day basis and then how I help friends. So let me tell you what I learned. My first lesson, my feelings were unique. Nobody could handle it the same way I could. It was different emotions. So find a way to deal with your emotions that fit you. It's not in a box. What I eventually learned is that I enjoy journaling. And so when I came out on the other side, I had journaled through my grieving process. It allowed me to sort of get those emotions out, those feelings, say whatever I want, whenever I want it. But it was unique to me. Remember that your feelings are unique. The second lesson, grief is a powerful emotion that can change the course of your life. For many, it rocks us to a core. Depending on the type of grief, it can rock you all the way down to the bottom. I can't tell you it's gonna get better with time, but it'll change you. I'm sure if you all, if you were thinking about sort of that first grief and loss, who you were at that moment to who you are today, probably is a different individual. Maybe because you dealt with it. I saw some twos there. Or maybe because you didn't and you had to figure out how to deal with it later on. It's going to rock you. It's going to be different. Who I am today and how I can talk about this, very different than who I was sort of 10, 15 years ago when I was still working through that process of grieving. Those two icons in my life. And it's okay. See, the interesting part about having this conversation is oftentimes we sort of put those emotions in a box like it's not okay. Okay, you grieving. We get it. You've got time, but you should be okay by this time. That's not true. It's okay. It's a powerful emotion that's going to change your life. And that's okay. My next lesson. And I've been trying to say this throughout, right? Someone doesn't have to sort of leave us through death to grieve. I want to make sure that we understand that grief and loss is about a loss, right? Sometimes that relationship, no, it's not still there, but it might be available to you, right? It has the same power to disable you. Grief can take over your life no matter what the grief is. If you take nothing else away from me today, remember that point, right? That grief and loss is exactly that, grief and loss. I'm going to tell you this one thing because it's, it's sort of, I told you my weekend was a bit overwhelming. So someone broke into my car over the weekend. And, you know, my first mind on Friday when I got out the car was like, okay, I had kicked off my shoes and put on my sneakers because I was going to the mall shopping for Christmas. And I left my shoes in the car. One of my favorite pair of shoes. This might be um, overshare, but I, I feel like I need to have a therapy session with all of you right now. I left my shoes in the backseat of the car. So when they broke in my car, they took my favorite pair of shoes. I am like, it took me all weekend to sort of get through that loss, right? I'm not completely through. I haven't accepted it. I will say that I won't stay in the depression piece that long. And I know I'm making it lighthearted, but that loss for me is very real. Like 
because I just bought them for me for myself for my birthday. I'm like, yes, my new pair of shoes. And now someone else has them. But as I said, it's got the same power. Now it's not going to disable me. I found some new ones to put on today. Not new, new. They just was in the closet. But you understand my process. That's a loss for me. And I am really, I'm angry about it for various reasons why somebody want to break into my car. But you understand what I'm getting to, right? That's a loss for me. It might not give me sort of the overwhelming feeling that it is to lose a person, but it's still a process that I need to go through. So just remember that. Lesson number four, the cultural rules about grief, how it's supposed to go, how it's supposed to be handled, what you should do and what you shouldn't do, they don't work. And I hate to say that, right? I hate to say that the things that we've learned and been taught as, you know, little people, they're not necessarily will work for you today, right? And that's okay. And you have to figure out how it works for you. Your culture might have, you know, a spiritual component to it that tells you to do X, Y, and Z. And you might try that. And I'm not saying to stray away from those norms, but understand that those norms might not be what helps you through your grief process. It didn't for me. We had the family just kept getting together after my grandparents. And so for me, that was actually overwhelming, like being around the family all the time and these and the icons weren't there. It, it, it actually saddened me more. And at one point I had to say, I, I just can't make it to the family. I just can't make it to the family. It's, it's too much for me. And I had to explain it. And eventually, you know, people were like, oh, okay. They didn't really get it, but it was helpful to my grief and loss process. You're strong. I know many of us hear this all the time, but it is a fact. We are built for strength as individuals. There are things that allow us to work through the process of life very strong, right? So that brain component we talked about, that muscle that's trying to regulate your heart, it's because that brain wants to make sure that they, you keep living every day. You are stronger than you think. It's hard, it's frustrating, it's mucky and all those things, but you are stronger for it. Remember that, okay? You are strong. And I said that to me, it was my mantra. I put it on post-its and I put it all over my dorm. Um, you are strong, you can do it, you can get better. I read that in some quirky book and it just helped me to see those sort of affirmations every day. And so for you, you're strong. I don't know any of you, or I might, and I just can't see you, but you are stronger than you think. So as I've gone through this, sort of that lessons learned, there's a lot more lessons that I could give you. We don't have that much time, but those are the ones that I wanted to make sure that I can relate to you today. But what are some lessons you've learned through grief, right? What are some things that allow you to be stronger every day? What would you like to impart sort of on the next person through your process of grieving? Now, we don't have time to see it all in the chat, but I asked that question because <clears throat> we don't often take time for the reflective moments. And so if you have a piece of paper in front of you, jot down sort of five things that you think you've learned through grief, through your grieving process? Did it allow you to sort of open up? Did you build a new friendship? Did you feel like you were stronger? What are some lessons that you've learned through your grieving process that if you put it on a post-it and you put it up and you look at it the next time you go through loss, will it help you overcome? Will it allow you to see yourself in a different lens as you go through the undeniable grieving process that I hope won't cripple you, will make you stronger. Now, I wish I could see what you're writing. I wish I could sort of put it all in a book, bound it up and give it out. 
but there are lots of books out there that are talking about lessons learned. Each individual's lesson are different because the relationship is different with each, each person. So take the time. And if you don't have time right now, put it to the side, maybe in your quiet moments as you're riding in the car, speak it in your phone, put your notes together. But what are some lessons you've learned through the grieving process and through grief? And how can you make sure that those lessons are top of mind for the next time that you experience grief and loss? So we've talked about the grieving process. We've talked about the difference between grief and grieving. I've given you some lessons learned from my perspective. Now I want to talk about sort of what happens to make sure that after you've gone through that process, you're still as strong as you were when you started. That's through some powerful self-care. It's a, essential. It's essential when you're experiencing grief to make sure that you're taking care of yourself. So oftentimes when we talk about self-care, it's through the norm, right? We want to make sure that we stay healthy and we stay strong, but know that make that self-care is also about a long-term solution. So the short-term work helps with that long-term, so long-term, sorry, long-term solutions. It's necessary for your effectiveness and success and honoring your professional and personal commitments. So I don't know if you're the house, you know, head of household, but you being strong is going to help you lead that household. I don't know if you're the primary breadwinner, but it's going to help you do that. I don't know if you're just that really good friend who everybody calls up. You can't take those phone calls if you're not in the best space that you possibly can be. So self-care. I advocate for self-care. Now, I will say I advocate for self-care on an ongoing basis. But if you don't have the opportunity to have a sustainable self-care solution at the moment, that you have one ready at hand, especially when you're experiencing grief. So focusing on self-care, it goes hand in hand, right? We just talked about it. If you're not taking care of yourself, how are you going to take care of anyone else? How are you going to be um, successful in that grieving process if you're not strong enough, right? If you're not making sure that you're good, then that grieving process might take you over. Remember we talked about sort of those people that are living in the past that haven't gone through the grieving process. Oftentimes it's because they haven't had the opportunity to self-care and grieve at the same time. It's work. I know. I get it. And it's going to take you to sort of really lean into it, but it's so important. So self-care while grieving, right? Understanding your grief. First, you just have to acknowledge, I'm grieving. There was a loss. And this is nine times out of 10 outside of sort of losing a loved one because you know that loss. But if anything else, understanding that that, that loss is affecting you. I'm going to say some things right now that you probably all know. Getting rest, a proper diet, taking some time out, right? Those are sort of the top three sort of things that any doctor, therapist, counselor sort of screams at us. You need rest. You have to have maintain a healthy diet. And you got to take some time out for yourself, right? The last part is stop apologizing. I can't tell you how many times I went to my professor and was like, I'm sorry, I'm running a little late because of this is happening. I'm sorry, this is, there's no need to apologize. The grieving process is a natural process that we all experience. Now, if you have to apologize first to make sure that people understand, but you don't have to apologize for going through the process for yourself. It's important and you have the right to go through the process. Don't apologize. But apologize to yourself if you're not getting that rest, that diet, or that time out. And then here's some key points. Keep a notebook, right, to release the thoughts. Remember I asked that question. I said, just jot it down. So, oh, I have a notebook that sits on my desk. It's just, it's my personal notebook. Now I have my workbook, right, in my personal book. And at times I just jot down some things that will allow me to sort of come back to or get it off my chest so that I can sort of stay in the moment of life that I'm in. Lower the expectations about how much you can do and when you can do it. It's okay when you're going through the self-care process. You might not be able to sort of 
get up every day and go work out as you used to. You might need to go down to three days instead of five. Or you might go from three days to five because you need to. And you need to tell somebody else that I need to take this time out to work out because I need that process for myself. Expect that sometimes you are not going to be making the best decisions possible. And remember things as usual. When our brain is sort of navigating multiple things, something is going to be left out. The brain is a powerful muscle and will work for you as much as it possibly can. But we have to be realistic about the fact that sometimes if it's working really fast and working hard, there's something that it has to take out to cover all that other emotions that's happening. And then talk to others. Find someone that you trust that you could just release the feelings and, 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 and emotions. Join a support group if you feel comfortable. Or call up a friend. Or maybe just call up a stranger. Sort of those, you know, not just any stranger, but you can call up a stranger to be able to talk that through. These are just some key points that I'm sure you've heard. I'm not saying anything that's sort of innovative or um, extreme. I just want to package it in a way so that you see that these things really can help you through the grieving process. So I want to start today, right? So I'm leaving with you a little bit of homework. I know you didn't think when you came here that someone would give you homework but I'm stressing that to you. Write down 10 things today that you're thankful for, right? That you can look back on when you're in that moment of grief and loss to remind you to uplift, to get through that process so you can go back to all those things you're thankful for. 10 things, and it can be simple. It doesn't have to be long sentences, just one word. Write down 10 things you're thankful for. For me, I sort of changed the list in the seasons. And to be honest with you, this is the perfect opportunity to have this conversation as we start a new year. It always gives us, gives us an excuse to do something a little bit more sort of pointed and directed. So, you know, if it's not for today, if you think about it, write down 10, 10 things you're thankful for. And so as you start the new year, the potential for the grief and loss, maybe you'll be prepared for that. Or it'll just uplift you every day as you look at sort of all those things that you're, you're thankful for. Write down 10 things that you're thankful for. Think about it. Now, I'm not going to check the homework. I'm trusting that you'll do it. But it's really up to you. I'll tell you that it helps me tremendously. Sort of on a sort of monthly basis, I sort of change my list up. It might be the same things on the list. It might change every once in a while, but 10 things that you're thankful for. And then here's a grief management activity, right? So if today you are in the space of grieving for whatever loss that you've had, I'd like to implore a grief management activity to you, right? on a post-it, on a small piece of paper at, you know, make, excuse me, the number one and then the line and then the number one under it. Write down the feeling you're having, <coughs> excuse me, at the top of it. I'm sorry. So at the top of the list, write down that feeling you're having. Is it anxiety? Is it stress? Is it fear? Is it whatever that is as you're going through that grief? and then write down the self-care activity that you need to address it, all right? And you can do this prior to, if you feel like that grief and loss sort of just takes you over and you might need a reminder, do that, right? Post it where you can see it. So if in the moment I'm feeling like I'm angry, what do I need to do? What's that self-care activity I need to be able to address that? Soon you'll find yourself with maybe a book, a booklet, or just post-its all over the place. Maybe you can put it on a board for yourself. Remind yourself to do that self-care activity as much as you need to, to address that emotion. It sort of puts it hand in hand, what I've been talking about. The beginning of my presentation towards the self-care piece. Mirror them, I mean, marry them, I'm sorry. Because in the end, that self-care is gonna get you through that grieving process as quickly as it possibly can.
So let's recap. Grief is an emotion that we will have. The grieving process allows us to address that grief. It's intense emotions. It's the opportunity for us to look at life differently. We're going to go through those five stages we talked about. But to get through all of that, we need the self-care. And how do we self-care? We find activities that allow us to address those exact emotions and come out on the other side. It doesn't all, it's not gonna get easier. As I said at the beginning, grief is the one emotion that we will all experience. How we attack that grief is different for each of us, but it will make us stronger. So when I experience grief and loss today, it looks very different than when I had lost my grandparents, my grandfathers in college. No, it isn't any easier, the loss, but how I approach it looks very, very different. And believe it or not, when I need it, I reach out. So if you ever need a support group, please, I implore you to get it. I thank you so much for your time. I'm gonna open it up for questions. I'm gonna turn it back over and I'm happy to answer any questions that you've had for me today. I thank